Today, I'm trying out the Elgato Prompter, a really cool piece of hardware designed to help you stay focused on the camera, keep your script right in front of you, and make camera work a ton easier. Welcome back to another video where this time I'm checking out the Elgato Prompter to see how it holds up for streaming, content creation, and remote broadcasts. I'll walk through setting it up, showcasing what it does, and integrating it into the Elgato software for ease of use. One thing you'll see on screen right now is the different backplates the prompter comes with. It has one for the Elgato face cam, one for DSLR cameras, and then one universal one. So all I had to do is just install the backplate and it was ready to go. When you first open up Camera Hub, it's gonna be fairly simple to set up. It's gonna automatically connect as long as you have the Elgato prompter connected via USB, and it will launch and make your window look something like this. So on the right side of the screen, you can see I have the teleprompter view, and on the left, I have my Camera Hub. Here, there's a bunch of different options you can do. In display, you can choose your output to be the Elgato prompter. You can power it on and off, so turn it on and off. You can change the brightness, which I can physically see, but you can't really see because I'm recording on OBS. And then you can change the contrast. The reason you would change the brightness is because sometimes there can be a bit of glare going towards the camera if there is too much light. However, you can just turn it down, but it's not really a problem and I haven't found it to be an issue. It's there in case. Now this, the content feature, is the really cool thing. You can click text and it will give you a script that you have written. You can click display and it's literally changing into a second monitor. So as you can see, I can literally drag anything I want there. I can take the software, put it onto the screen, and now my prompter literally has my camera hub. So I'll move it back here um, to show you how it works. And then you also have a chat section where you can add a Twitch chat that you want and it should show up a chat. So let's stick on text for now. Here we have a random script that I made on ChatGPT. Um, in the appearance, you can change the font. So Arial Black, Arial, Comic Sans. You can change the font size to whatever you prefer. The margins, I normally keep everything about 10%. The vertical margin, which I keep on zero. And then the line spacing, which I normally keep on about 115. Then you can change the background color. So you can make it pink if you want. I'm just gonna keep it on black because it's easier and then text on white. Now this little thing called opacity is something that's really, really cool. So if I turn it down, you don't really see anything happening. You just see the opacity go down. But what this is really doing is I can move my mouse behind it and then the opacity is of the text. So if I move some window there, so let's take this camera hub and move it into the screen. As you can see, depending on what brightness I have and change it, this literally shows my prompter, which is really cool. I'm gonna change the opacity back to 100. Uh, and then let's move on to my favorite part of the whole thing, scrolling. So you have something called constant mode where you can click on a script, hit play, and it's gonna automatically scroll. You can change the speed. You can change the reading position to where your eyes like it the most. I normally have it here. And then afterwards, the coolest, coolest thing is voice sync. When I hit voice sync and then I hit play, it should on the top right set to active. And once it does, that means it's listening to me. So if I read the prompter, let's scroll down a little bit down and let's have a read of this and I'll show you what it does. Welcome back to another video where this time I'm checking out the Elgato prompter to see how it folds up for streaming, content creation and remote broadcasts. I'll walk through setting it up, showcasing what it does and integrating it into the Elgato software for ease of use. Let's get started. And there we go. Now I can hit pause and literally you can see it scrolls as I talk and it's so easy to read. So the intro that I did at the beginning is, well, was really simple to film. I could keep eye contact the whole time and I didn't have to remember anything. Now here at the bottom, you also have something called show overlay. And all that does is it adds a little crosshair where you can have it a circle, cross, oh, a camera icon. And that shows you the middle of the lens. I don't really use this, uh, but if you want to have that, feel free. It's so you can keep your focus right in the middle. So for now, I'm gonna turn it off. And this is essentially everything that is inside of the Camera Hub software. If you have the Elgato Phase Cam, you can add some effects here and configure it. But this is strictly speaking just for the prompter. So moving on, I'm gonna show you how to integrate it into the Stream Deck software, which is super, super simple. As long as you launch the software, put it full screen, all you have to do is open the Elgato Marketplace. It will come up with a window here that you can see. And nice and easy, you just type in camera, hit enter, and it comes up with the camera hub. You click open and stream deck, and then you just install the plugin. Once you're there, this is the camera hub plugin, and you can literally start adding things. 
So right now I'm on the Stream Deck Plus where I have a few dials here that I can scroll and then a few button options. And I also have my Corsair Scimitar Elite, which I use for Discord so far. So if I move back to my Stream Deck Plus, I'm gonna go to my camera hub. I'm gonna add a few buttons. First button I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do prompt to display. So here I can press a button to turn it on and off or change the brightness. Then I'm gonna do prompt to mode. And in prompt to mode, I can change it between different states. So this one I'll change to display. Prompt to mode here to text. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit these and this literally just changes it instantly. So boom, there we go. Nice and easy. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some scrolling. So I'm gonna click prompt to scrolling, hit this, and I can change the scroll speed and then adjust. So slide the vertical, slide the horizontal, and then the set speed. So you can basically make it move around. Let's see what there is. Uh, window to prompter is really, really cool. So if you add that in, you can go and choose the different apps you have. So let's say I have Photoshop open right now. And if I hit this button, it's literally going to throw Photoshop into there. So if I change the display mode, I have Photoshop there right now. If I copy this and let's say I want to put, hmm, let's do OBS and I hit OBS, my recording has now gone into the prompter. So Photoshop, OBS, pretty cool. You can basically move whatever window you want in there in one single button press. Over here for one of my dials, I can do prompter control and prompter control changes basically what you see on the prompter. So right now I'm just moving the dial. I can increase the step size and then just move it down and move it up. And then I can just hit play. And then as you can see, it's getting ready to sync my microphone. And then once it syncs my microphone, I'm back to basically reading the prompter as I want. So that is really, really cool. And it's as easy as that. All you do is get a plugin, throw it in there, and then you have full integration. You can add it to your stream deck, to your mouse, to your foot pedal, whatever you have just explore and do what you want. For the last bit, I'm going to demonstrate how I can watch something on the prompter while also being able to read a full script. You can put a vMix call in there as a broadcast talent, you can put a stream, graphics, or even your own notes. As a final note, big thank you to Elgato for sending this prompter over to me so I can show you guys how good it is. I've been using it for daily use. Now the only content I make is on YouTube, I don't really stream, but I've been using it as a second monitor to put Discord on there, to talk to people when I'm on camera. And it's been really, really good, especially for, you know, any sort of work meetings. If you're a broadcast talent, this is a must have if you're doing remote shows. If you're doing any conferences a lot, must have. It's just so, so good and so powerful. And for the price point, it's just amazing. So definitely check it out and I'll see you guys for the next video.